welcome back to your shop. I thought today what I would do is uh, take a look at my drill press with you um, and uh, show you some of the modifications uh, that I want to do uh, and that I'm currently doing with it. Um, this drill press, uh, like I mentioned in my shop tour video, uh, came from my dad uh, from his shop and uh, before that it was with a good friend of the family's in his shop. Uh, it's, uh, it's seen a lot of miles on it, um, but it's, uh, it's a really good, uh, really good quality drill press. Um, I really don't know anything about it other than that. In fact, I've never even heard of the name uh, of the drill press uh, before this one. So um, I don't really know much about it. Uh, if you do, leave, uh, leave a comment uh, down below and, uh, and let me know uh, maybe some, uh, some history of the, of the drill press. But anyway, what I'm working on right now is uh, making a table for the, uh, for the drill press. Um, like most drill presses, uh, the cast iron table that comes with it is a little bit small, maybe a bit small for woodworking. Um, you can certainly make do with it, but it is a bit small. Um, so what I thought I would do is, uh, is make, uh, make a, bigger, a bigger table with a fence on it. Um, now, if you go online, there's all kinds of videos on drill press tables and so on. They're all more or less the same. Um, so this is not going to be anything radical or anything uh, out of the ordinary. Um, it's just your basic uh, drill press uh, tabletop. But I thought uh, it was a good, uh, good video to, uh, to put up there as uh, my solution to um, some of the problems um, with my, uh, with my uh, drill press. But what I thought we'd do first is actually take a look at the drill press and some of the modifications that have been done to it um, over the years. Um, and then we can uh, take a look at, uh, at the table that I'm working on to, uh, um, to put on to uh, the cast iron table. So why don't we take a little tour of the drill press as it stands right now. So here's an overall view of the drill press as it, uh, as it stands right now. So it's your pretty standard drill press. It's uh, like I say, it's not a bench top, but it's not a floor model either. Um, I'm not sure what they're called, but it's uh, it's uh, certainly much better than the than the one that I originally had, which uh, which was just a small bench top one. So this is uh, this is a, a definite step up. Um, it is a gorilla uh, made in Taiwan, um, but then it's got the Toronto uh, uh, plate there. So I really don't know much about gorilla. Um, I've seen them on Kijiji uh, a bit uh, and uh, and for sale, but don't really know too much about them. Um, but your pretty standard drill press runs on a belt system in there, and then the uh, on-off switch, which um, I'm not sure whether this is original to the uh, drill press or uh, an add-on, um, but that's the um, that's the on-off switch there. Uh, it looks to me like it might be some sort of an add-on um, to whatever was there originally, but I uh, couldn't really tell you. And then the uh, I use one of the Lee Valley magnetic uh, gooseneck lights there, just to give me a bit extra light. Um, and then down the bottom is a base that, uh, that uh, my dad made. Uh, it's got two wheels at the back, so you can just lift up the front and roll it around as needed. Um, and uh, he's made that base uh, just to... Uh, um, he didn't have a lot of bench space in his shop, so he he uh, he made the base to get it at a good working height. Um, my idea is um, eventually I'm going to make more of a cabinet type base, similar to what my uh, what my bandsaw sits on, um, and with a with a couple of drawers uh, in this one, um, just to give me more uh, more storage space. As you can see at the bottom, I've just got an old uh, kitchen drawer um, just piled up with stuff as it uh, as it stands right now. And then if we come on this side, again, pretty standard drill press. Uh, if we pan down, you'll see the chain that runs from the, the top down. And that chain is connected to the, uh, to the handle right there. And then it runs down to this foot pedal down here. And the idea that uh, my dad had was to attach the foot pedal to the, uh, the handle. And when you step on the foot pedal, it lowers the quill. And then you let it go and the quill goes back up. Um, so the idea was that you could hold on to 
pieces of work uh, with both hands and use your foot to uh, to lower the drill the drill into uh, into the work um, he says he didn't use it all that often I've used it once or twice but again uh, I haven't used it all that often so uh, one of the things I think I'm going to change when I do the base is uh, is take out that uh, that foot pedal now what I'm going to be focusing on right now is the uh, the ta the table um, it's of course comes with your standard cast iron table um, cranks up and down um, and works adequately well but um, like with most drill presses that table is not very big so for woodworking uh, it can be a bit small um, I've gotten away with using it uh, so far for a couple of years uh, and it works uh, works uh, not too bad but uh, certainly having a bigger table would be helpful um, now one of the uh, one of the problems that I have which is uh, uh, the way it is with most drill presses is the handle. So if we kind of come down at table level, you can see that the handle sticks up above the table. In this case, quite a bit, about uh, two, two and a half inches. Um, and if we come around to the side, um, you can see that, uh, that there it is there. Um, and when you crank the handle, it clears the table, but it sticks up uh, above the table. Um, which is a, a design that uh, I think most drill presses have. Anyway, what I'm going to have to do is uh, either um, end my my table here, um, sort of in line with the cast iron table, so the drill the handle will clear it. Or I think what I'm going to do is make, basically make riser blocks to bring the wooden table up above the handle, so the uh, the handle will then go underneath. Because I would like the uh, the wooden table to be to come right back to the post. Um, so I think that's what I'm going to do, or at least that's what I'm going to start with, and we'll see how that works. And I may end up having to change it, um, but we'll see. So why don't we get started with uh, with working on the uh, on the wooden table for the drill press? All right. So what I've done so far is um, I'm using some plywood. Um, I happen to have some um, pieces of cherry uh, veneer plywood that uh, was uh, destined for a project that uh, never came to fruition. Um, in fact, it got started and then uh, it got changed into something else. So I've got a few pieces of cherry plywood uh, left over from that project. So I'm going to use it uh, for, this, uh, for this drill press uh, table. Um, so I've got two uh, half inch uh, thick pieces that uh, basically I'm, I ripped down to size uh, and trimmed up and I'm going to stack one on top of the other um, and then basically when all said and done I'm going to have some edge strips uh, again in cherry um, for it uh, both front back and sides um, and then uh, and then I'll, I'll make a fence for the back uh, and then um, some uh, some uh, slots to for the f uh, fence to ride in. So uh, what I've done so far is uh, cut the. Uh, this was one uh, piece of plywood. I've cut it into two, trimmed it up, and uh, drilled some pilot holes. So I'm I've got to uh, attach the two pieces of uh, of plywood together now, which is what I'm gonna which is what I'm gonna do. So I could uh, uh, glue it and screw it, but I think for my purpose, I'm just going to uh, screw them uh, screw them together. So now we've got our uh, the base started. So like I say, I'm going to attach uh, some edge strips to it. I'm going to glue those on, um, both front, back, and then uh, and then cut the sides to to length. So I'm going to do that now, and then we'll uh, we'll come back and uh, and take a look at what's next.
hang on a sec. You guys probably don't need to see me gluing on the edging, do you? I mean, some glue, put it on, clamp it, let it dry. Pretty straightforward. So why don't we skip over all that kind of stuff and we'll get to the next part. Sounds like a good idea. Let's. All right, so it's the next day. Let's take these clamps off and take a look at what we've got. expected. So uh, I don't think you'll be able to see this on the video, but uh, I need to do a little bit of trimming around the edge, both top and bottom. So I think I'll uh, break out the hand plates and uh, see what I can get done. All right, so now I just have to uh, take down the edges uh, down to the plywood. I'm just going to use my hand plate uh, to do this. Um, there's very little to take off, um, so it won't take very long, and I just want to be careful uh, that I don't go too far and cut through the thin uh, cherry veneer uh, plywood. So uh, a few passes uh, all the way around, and uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully I'll stop in time. To keep checking because I'm so close it's not I'm a little further here I'm just about there and there that's got that there more past go. So that's done. There. So that feels pretty much level. So that side's level. So now I just have to do the other three, flip it over and do the top and then we'll come back and uh, go on from there. All right, so I've done a few things uh, off camera that I didn't think were overly interesting, um, but uh, let's get you caught up on where I am now. Um, I mentioned that the, uh, the, the crank for the table um, is, uh, sticks up uh, a fair bit uh, as, uh, as you crank the table up and down, so I need to raise the auxiliary table up enough for that handle to clear. So I dug around in my scrap bin, found a couple of scraps, um, drilled a hole in the center of each one, uh, put in a threaded insert, and I'm going to use these, uh, these star knobs for each one. 
Um, so it'll sit, uh, each one will sit like that and I'll be able to take them, uh, screw them in, tighten them down and take the auxiliary table uh, off and uh, put it on fairly easily just with the two star knobs. And I think that should, should hold it enough. Um, and then uh, the other thing I did was uh, I've drilled two holes uh, and counter something sunk them quite a bit um, so uh, with and then two screws that will get attached to the bottom of the auxiliary table um, so that'll hold it down to the uh, to the cast iron table so that's um, that's those and those are ready to go um, I also happen to have um, two uh, 12 inch lengths of this t-track um, so that's what I'm going to use um, for the fe uh, fence to be able to slide back and forth. So um, what I'm going to do right now is uh, is route out the uh, the slots for the T-track. So this T-track is um, that's what it looks like uh, end view. So it's a total of um, three quarters of an inch uh, deep, and, or sorry. Um, uh, three eighths of an inch deep and then um, this to this outside measurement is quarter uh, three quarters of an inch um, and then there's these two little wings uh, here so I'm going to use uh, just a regular drill bit to hog out the majority of the material and then I've got a little small wing cutter uh, bit that'll do these uh, these little wings here uh, and then if I do it right the tracks should just be able to uh, to slide in um, into the slot and then depending on how tight the fit is, uh, drill a couple of holes, put a couple of screws, countersink them in, and uh, we'll be good to go for that. So um, let's get to routing out the, uh, the slots for the truck. So, how many of you eagle-eyed viewers spotted my mistake? I went past the line where I wanted to stop. I didn't set up a physical stop at the end that the router could bump into, and I went past it. So there's my 12-inch T-track, and if I line it up at the back, I've gone past it. So, I've got a couple of options. Um, I'm going to have to get, uh, I'll get some more T-track. Um, and just uh, stop it here and get the and cut the T-track to the right length. Or I think what I'm going to do is actually finish the uh, the route uh, routing cut all the way through, so it's a complete all the way through. And then uh, when I get some T-track, it'll just be uh, from front to back. And I think that's going to be my option. And I'll do the same for the other for the other T-track as well. I can use this in the in the meantime until I get some more, but. I'll, uh, I think I'll make it all the way through. So planning is, uh, is key, but recovering from your mistakes is always a good skill to have too. So let's finish the, uh, the cut on this one. All right, so I've gone all the way through front to back. So uh, when I get the T-track, I'll just get it that uh, get it that length. So now we'll move the, the fence over and do the other one. All right, now I've changed bits. So I put in this uh, small wing cutter bit, um, and again, it's to uh, to cut out the slots for the little wings on either side. So I just had to uh, put in the wing cutter, um, set it to the right depth, and I'll be able to uh, run one side and then shift the fence over a little bit, 
run the other side and then do the same on uh, on this slot and uh, hopefully if everything goes well the uh, the t-track will fit in no problem Bit of a tight fit, but I think with a little bit of persuasion that's going to work just fine. So move the fence over and do this cut. So there we go that feels nice and flush along the top and clear out some of the sawdust and that should slide in no problem so there we go the t-tracks are in they're uh, they're nice and snug they're flush for one thing which is perfect and they're nice and tight in there so i don't even think i need to put in a couple of screws i may decide to later on but uh, those are those are so nice and tight in there that I don't think I need any screws at least for now. Uh, I will order um, or go pick up uh, a couple of others uh, the right length now that I've gone all the way through, and uh, take these ones out and get the uh, get the uh, new ones in there. So the next thing I want to do is I want to cut out a uh, a recess in the center um, so I can have a removable uh, plate in here. So as it gets uh, um, drilled uh, drilled out and so on I can just pull it out and plop a new one in so I'm going to mark that out uh, and then uh, and then route out uh, the center for that okay so I'm ready to uh, route out the centerpiece so what I've decided to use is um, I have some of this uh, um, scrap plywood it's uh, um, well, they'll call it half inch. It's of course a little less than half inch um, plywood, uh, and I've cut out um, a four by four square, um, and I actually cut out a few of these, so I've got some extras. Uh, and um, so essentially, I'm going to cut out a four by four um, recess, and then the square will sit down in there. It is not, and you'll see this uh, when I get it on the drill press. It's not centered. Um, on the drill press. Um, actually, the, the drill bit should hit somewhere about here. Um, and the reason for that is, uh, like I've seen on many, uh, many videos of, of making these, is um, as, as you drill in, um, that area gets a little bit chewed up. So you can just pop it out, rotate it, put it down, and then drill into the clean area. Pop it out, rotate it, drill in, and keep doing that. Um, if you don't drill all the way through, then you can theoretically turn it over and you get four more uh, areas to drill into. So that's, uh, that's what I'm planning on doing. So it's four by four square um, and uh, so it can go in any way. So I'm just going to uh, route out the recess. You'll see I put some uh, double stick tape, some, um, some scraps here. Um, so that will uh, trap in the router. Um, so hopefully I don't blow out past the line. I've kept inside my line. Um, I, I hope I will keep inside my line and then I can just use a chisel to, uh, to chisel to the line because um, um, I'm fairly, fairly close in most cases and I have to square off the corners anyway. So let's start routing out, uh, routing out this, uh, this center section.
So hopefully I'm down to my the proper depth. Of course I can't fit this in here because I got to square off the edges. Um, so part of the reason why I decided to go with a square um, is uh, is it's easy to cut out these or easier to cut out these uh, squares uh, when I need to replace any uh, rather than doing a round one. Um, so for me just uh, you know few cuts on the table saw or whatnot and uh, it's easier to cut these out so uh, do a little clean, a little bit of cleanup unfortunately my router um, does not have any kind of dust collection uh, with it so I don't usually I don't typically like using actually a handheld router I don't particularly like using it in the side either because it makes quite the mess but um, I think Figured this was the uh, the best way to, to go about this, and I just have some uh, some cleaning up to do afterwards. So uh, grab the chisel and uh, and start uh, cleaning up the, the corners um, to get the uh, to get this piece to fit in. All right, so just a matter of chiseling away the corners. I was able to score the line a bit so I can just kind of run down the line. When I get into the corner here, I want to make sure that I Get my chisel in that line. Chip it away first. And basically do that wherever it's needed. Okay, so I got the uh, I've got it cut out. A little bit of trimming, a little bit of finessing, and this will fit in uh, quite nicely. Um, it's it's uh, it's snug, but it's not too snug. I don't want to put it all the way in because I've got to make a recess, um, maybe over here, where I can get my finger in there to to lift this out when I want to uh, when I want to change it out or flip it over or whatever. But um, but it seems to fit in uh, fit in quite nicely. So, uh, so I guess the next step is to, uh, to make a little recess over here. There, so just a little recess. I can get my finger in there. So I think I have a little bit more cleanup to do around the edges. It's still fitting, sitting just a little proud in spots. So I think there's some cleanup to do. But once that cleanup is done, then this should sit down quite nicely. So the next thing we have to do is um, is a fence. So I'll finish cleaning this up. 
and uh, and then the next uh, next step will be uh, will be a fence to uh, to uh, go on this table. Okay, so I've been working on the fence uh, for the drill press table. Um, it basically uh, pretty straightforward. It consists of two pieces: a base piece, uh, again cherry plywood, uh, and then the fence piece. I've gone ahead and routed out um, uh, the space uh, for the fence to attach to the base. So it sits on uh, something like that. And then I'm going to uh, attach some solid cherry blocks on, uh, on the top and the sides like that to dress it up a little bit, cover up the plywood. I'm going to put a piece uh, along the back as well with some side pieces. Um, so those are going to get uh, uh, glued on, which is the next step. Uh, and then once that's all glued on and dried, um, then I've got a couple more things to do. I've got to uh, drill the holes for the uh, star knobs to go into the T-track so the fence can move back and forth. Um, and then I have to decide uh, whether I'm going to put some corner blocks uh, on either end, um, 90 degree blocks, um, just to help support the fence. When I clamp this together um, as a trial, uh, after I cut out the rabbit, uh, it's stayed at 90 degrees. Um, um, it was, in fact, it was bang on 90 degrees. So um, I'm thinking I maybe don't need it, but I may put some in there, just peace of mind sort of idea anyway. Um, but I'll tackle that uh, a little bit down the road. First things first though, I'll glue on these uh, solid cherry uh, pieces of, of edging. Um, I'm not gonna film, uh, film that. Um, that's just uh, screwing and clamping, or uh, sorry, gluing and clamping it on. Um, so when we come back, um, all this cherry will be on, and, uh, and it, I may even have the two, the base and the fence, uh, put together. Um, but uh, uh, when we come back, at least the, the cherry pieces will be glued on and, and the glue will be dry. So let's get to work on that. So let's get this table attached. So I just have to line up the holes and then screw in the, uh, the star knobs. And I think the, uh, I'm pretty sure that these, uh, these star knobs with the, uh, with the inserts are going it's going to hold the table just just strong enough it's there isn't a whole lot of load put on the table most of the load will be down force so um and then the fence now you'll remember of course that uh i made an error in uh, when i was routing out the t-track um, i intended to to go only 12 inches because that's how long the t-track is uh, and i went past that so uh, i decided to route out uh, all the way from the back to the front 
and, uh, and then the T-track will run back to front. With the original idea, with only 12 inches, I hadn't thought of this at the time, but if I wanted to take the fence off or put it on, it won't go on without me taking uh, the table off uh, and then slipping it in from the back. Whereas with the T-track being all the way from the front to the back, I can slip the, uh, I can slip the fence on from the front and slide it all the way back and that works much better. So call it a happy accident if you want, but, uh, but that's, I think that's gonna work best. I have more T-Track on order um, to, uh, to go all the way from the front to the back, and I ordered an extra one, because I think what I'll do is I'll put a groove in the fence uh, and then put a piece of T-Track there as well so I can add in uh, stops if I, if I need to down the line. So, um, uh, and the fence, I've checked the, the square of the fence to the table and it's dead on 90 degrees. So um, assuming it doesn't shift over time, then, uh, then we should all be good that way. So there we go. Like I said, I have not reinvented the wheel here. Um, there's all kinds of uh, variations on this uh, on the internet. Um, so this was just my take on dealing with uh, some of the things that I had to get around with, uh, uh, with my particular drill press. Um, but I think this is going to uh, I think this is going to work out quite well. So again, thank you for watching. Uh, please click uh, like and subscribe to uh, to the channel. Uh, I've got more video uh, videos uh, planned, so uh, make sure that you click the the little bell so you'll get notified when uh, when I release the next one. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon.